I just wanted to just uh, share just for a few moments this morning uh, in the Word, uh, in, the, in the message. We've uh, been looking at a little series called Surprise the World, looking at habits of uh, missional uh, uh, people, really people that when we follow Jesus, th- there's different practices and habits that we can do to help us to show the love of God to those around us. And I think it's really important that we uh, learn this and, and grow in this. And we've looked at the importance of blessing people. Uh, not just this morning, but we looked a little bit at that. We looked at the importance of eating together. That was a good one, wasn't it? We practiced that, some, like, inviting people to have food together. Um, and, and we had Johnny from, um, uh, from King Standing just looking at uh, what it meant to be sent, to be people that we, we live sent. Um, and today we're going to be looking at uh, the, one of these aspects that's called learning, learning Christ. Anybody like learning? Yeah, some... some uh, academics maybe, or in uh, the word disciple actually means to be a student, to be a learner, someone that, that wants to learn. And um, the expression to learn Christ was very common in the early church, to learn about who Jesus is and, and his nature. And we're going to learn a little bit about that or encourage us to, to make this a regular habit in our lives. I remember, maybe you've heard this saying before that Every day is a school day. Have you ever heard that? No? Okay, some people have. Uh, But I think that's, that. for me, it's only if we choose for that to be the case. Like, it doesn't happen by accident that we learn new things. We have to have a posture of wanting to discover, find out more. And I think that there's lots that we can still learn about who Jesus is. I remember growing up at school. So some of you might be thinking, I, I don't like learning so much or... Maybe this isn't for me, but I, I absolutely hated learning at school. I just wanted to have fun and just play. Uh, again, yeah, I just think, uh, I remember even you, I got kicked out of Sunday school one week. It's terrible, isn't it? Terrible. But, you know, I look back and I think, actually, I didn't really grow in those times. And, yeah, we mature, don't we, and we pursue. But I think one thing that really shifted in, me, in, in my life and walk with Jesus is I made that intentional choice that I want to learn. And when we want to learn and find out more about God, not only do we grow closer to him and in our intimacy and our walk with him, but like we're talking about in this series, our witness and our, we get to reflect Jesus more to those around us because we're spending time with him, we're learning about him and growing in our walk with him. So when we stop learning, uh, we stop growing. So I think it's really important Uh, I don't know how much you read the Bible or how much you you spend time researching, exploring, studying the word and and who Jesus is. But I would encourage you, let's continue that practice. Make it a regular habit in your life. And um, I know it can be difficult to carve time, but the more that we learn about Jesus, the more that we grow with him and the more that we can bless those around us. So let's make that a practice. Um, And actually here as a church, one of our our mission statement really is to help people grow in relationship with Jesus. And we can't really do that if we don't know who Jesus is ourselves or if we're not growing in relationship with him ourselves. So we want to encourage you to to learn the ways of Christ, learn who he is and and continue to grow with him. So how do we do this? Well, uh, being a student of Christ, we do it a couple of ways. Firstly, I'd say is we pursue understanding. We want to explore, pursue. You know, we have to run after this. It doesn't just happen and come to us. I love that Jesus is so accessible, that the Bible is, is freely given. And we can read it at our leisure. It, it's sometimes, you know, one of the, the privileges and freedoms that we have in this country that not everybody has. But we can read it and we can pursue it. And I would encourage us to do that. Make that a priority in our lives. And let's value the, the importance of learning. It says in Proverbs 4, 7, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom, though it cost you all you have, Get understanding. It's quite a high priority, isn't it? Though it costs you all you have, get understanding. And I think when we learn about Jesus, he gives us insights for our whole life, every area, every aspect. He speaks and encourages us and and guides us. When we learn, we don't just grow, but we make the world a better place because we become like those who we spend time with, those who we learn from. And when we're rooted in the scriptures, in who God is and who Jesus is, it's really important that we reflect that to those around us. But I would say as well, not just trying to encourage us to pursue understanding. I don't know about you, but it feels like 
in the world, there is so much information, isn't there? There's so many things that we can explore, pursue, try and find information out. And, and the internet is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Because you can type something and it just comes up straight away. But I would just encourage us to make pursuing Jesus a priority. There's lots of things that we can explore and become experts in and, and dig deeper. And we've all got passions and, and desires to, to learn about other things, which I would say, go for. But I would say never at the substitute or the sacrifice of pursuing Jesus, studying more of who he is in our lives. Because it says in, in uh, Hebrews 5.14 that solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So as we make it a priority ourselves, you know, they, they trained themselves, they learned and they grew in their understanding of God and the word that they were then able to distinguish between good and evil. It helps us to make good godly decisions and follow Jesus in our lives. So I wonder who or what it is that we're pursuing our understanding of. I don't know if I was to, uh, uh, you know, ask you, like, if there's a specific area that you would know all the answers to the question. Have you ever watched the program Mastermind where they come up with a specific subject, what your chosen subject would be? It's quite impressive, isn't it, how much people know about certain things. But just in the, in the book, Surprise the World, they, they reference this story of uh, going to a conference and asking a group of surfers. It was like a, surf, a Christian surfing conference. These things do happen. <laughs> Who'd have thought? But at the conference, they asked, they went round and said, who is your favorite surfer? And they said this, this person's name, I've not heard of him until today or, or this week, is Kelly Slater. You can see in this picture, you might not be a surfer. You might not ever see yourself doing this one day. Um, but actually, they, the, all the people in the conference said Kelly Slater. And, and actually, they knew this person really well. They could say uh, their age. They could say all their achievements, all the things that they'd been, uh, even the adverts that they'd been in. And they just knew Kelly Slater so well. Even how many championships they'd won. 11-time uh, world uh, champion of surfing, Kelly Slater. A little bit of information, perhaps irrelevant. But... I think for me is we can find our certain passions and find out so much and, you know, get, dig deep into these areas of, of life. But I think the question is, can, how much can we say that we know about Jesus? You know, we might have uh, heroes. They might be athletes. They might be musicians. We might have different people in our lives that we look up to and we know a huge amount about. But I would say that I wonder how much we know about Jesus because Actually, the more that we know about him, he, he changes our lives, doesn't he? he? He's got insights and revelations and wisdom and guidance that is far above and beyond anything, any earthly person, the knowledge that we can attain and have about. And Michael Frost says this, we should be able to speak about Jesus the way surfers speak about Kelly Slater, with energy and enthusiasm, with reverence and awe, with delight and wonder. You know, the way that we, it, I'm, not condemning it, I'm not condemning people having interests. You know, if you've got particular passions and desires and dreams and stuff, then it's good to pursue those. But I wonder how much do we know Jesus? And not just in our heads, but in our lives and in our experience with him. So we have to devote ourselves to this. Uh, it says in Acts chapter 2, this community of faith as it was formed, it says they devoted themselves again to the apostles' teaching. We have to develop uh, an attribute of a learner. The, the, the new Alpha series, their tagline is stay curious. Do you have a curious mindset? Do you, you want to find out more? Uh, I would encourage you, that's a good thing, to stay humble, to be teachable, uh, and to keep asking God to give you revelation as you read the scriptures and, and learn more about him. There's actually a, a verse in Proverbs that stood out to me a little while ago. It says that the fool hates correction. <laughs> I, I don't like being corrected. <laughs> Maybe I'm a bit of a, well, yeah, speaks, speaks for itself. But I think that actually in our pursuit of learning, we must be open to correction. We must be, you know, for, for Jesus to, to shape us, to teach us. And I think that sometimes, again, I'm just sharing my journey. It, it can be hard when we read things or we discover things that perhaps 
cause us to be a bit uncomfortable or we have to change as a result of what we learn. And I think it's really important that when, when we learn, and it's not just we learn things that we want to hear, but we learn about who Jesus is and what he wants us to know about him in our lives. We can learn in a variety of ways. And, and at the church, we provide small groups. We encourage you to connect and learn through that. Connect nights, Alpha Course, our Sunday gathering, even you coming here today and, and joining online. We're, we're positioning and posturing ourselves to learn, to learn about who Jesus is and to grow in our relationship with him. So what do we do? I'll just encourage us, a little practical thing that we can do is spend at least one period of time this week learning Christ. Whether it's reading the Gospels or, or, or exploring a bit further, um, spending time and asking God to reveal more of himself to you. So we pursue understanding. But the second thing I just want to highlight today is to seek wisdom as well. Does anybody have a friend that is a know-it-all? Maybe, maybe the, you're that person, I don't know. <laughs> We wouldn't admit to it, of course, but sometimes we can know a lot of information, can't we? Or we can fill our minds with a lot of knowledge, which again is, is, is helpful and useful. But actually, if we're not doing anything with it, it, it's a bit surplus, isn't it? Like information, you know, and the, the knowledge and the understanding that we have about Jesus, I think it, it's really important that it doesn't just stay up here, but it translates in our heart and that there's an outworking of that in our lives. It says in Ephesians 1.17, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better. That you may know him better. And that's, again, a prayer that he reveals himself to us more and more. But I think that that's something that we can ask for as well, that God gives us insights about who he is as we explore and read more about him. You know, as we pray as well and, and invite God in, sometimes there's, as you pursue things, there's mysteries in life, aren't there? I don't know how you find it, but when you don't know something, you want to find out. Have you ever prayed to God to give you an answer to something and you don't get the answer? I'm just being real. You know, I, I think it's, it's sometimes we, we, we want to know why things are happening and how they're happening and we want insights and revelation and we don't receive it. But I would encourage us today to be still and know that I am God, to continue to ask God for revelation, to keep wrestling with those difficulties or those tensions. But it's really important that we trust in him even when we don't know. Trust in him even when we don't have the answers and trust in him uh, even when we're in that place of uncertainty. The habit of learning Christ isn't uh, just to fill our heads and our minds with information, but it's to fill our hearts with a revelation of who God is, his character, which will lead to transformation in our lives. Over the last few years, and, and some will know, I absolutely love reading, and I've read a couple of uh, biographies of people's lives, Muhammad Ali, Richard Branson, you know, Billy Graham, you know, and it's so good to just get a glimpse into their lives. Maybe you've read these books and biographies. You like maybe watching documentaries. You can see um, about ins and outs that you might not have seen otherwise. But actually, when you read a book like that, it's so different from when you read God's Word. Because the Bible is alive and active. And it can speak to us so powerfully in a way that perhaps a biography about a person can only give us so much information. I would encourage us as well as we read the Bible to ask God to, to speak to us, to reveal himself in our lives. You know, we don't just want to know, you know, you can know about somebody, you know, when you read these, like a biography of somebody, but actually when we read Jesus, we get to know him personally. Isn't that amazing? That Jesus is, is somebody that we don't just know information about, but we know him personally personally in our everyday lives that he's alive and I think like I said earlier we've got to be intentional to make a choice um, I've been married a, a couple of years now some will know that with Moyo and we've uh, I would say that I've been learning a lot <laughs> about who Moyo is uh, about who I am uh, and those that are perhaps been in relationships or in a relationship 
you know, we, we're constantly learning and learning. And, and I think that's a good thing. But we have to make it a choice to say, I want to learn. Because we could just say, I, I, you know, just be very ignorant and just say, you know, not think about that more. But to keep growing in our relationship with Jesus, we have to keep choosing a posture of learning. God, will you teach me? Will you shape me? Will you correct me? Will you help me? Not always easy, especially when it's hard things and, and, and correction and shaping us. Um, but yeah, we need wisdom in our lives. And just lastly, as we pursue understanding, practicing the way of Jesus, I, I would really say that this is so important that we don't just learn, we don't just uh, seek wisdom, but we apply what we learn. There has to be putting it into practice. You can see here, I don't know if any of you like to play tennis, but I think it says in uh, Philippians 4, 9, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or even seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. We've got to apply the things that we learn, haven't we? I think that that's what brings the growth. That's what brings the transformation. And in many ways, we, again, we can learn a lot of, and have a lot of information, but it's, it's, it's our works, it's, it's our acts, it's, it's the fruit of what we do and, and the fruit of what we've learned that really makes a difference in people's lives and helps us grow in relationship with God. You know, reading on its own and research has many benefits and, and um, advantages, but I think it's when we begin to apply those things that we learn about who Jesus is that we really see change in and through us but a blessing to those around us James 1 22 says do not merely listen but do what it says we don't just listen to what the Bible teaches us but we apply it to our lives I think it's so so important again uh, there's this saying and, and it's something that's been referenced many many times about what would Jesus do but I think that that question is helpful for us to think about that but actually uh, in this book it references this phrase that what would Jesus want me or us to think be and do here and now so when we think about who Jesus is and we learn about who he is we can ask and we can approach him with this question what would Jesus want me to uh, think be do but here and now not just an abstract thought but the application of following Jesus in our lives right now and maybe just to finish with the parable of the wise and the foolish builder the difference between the two was that the, the wise builder put it into practice the things that he heard he was obedient to the things that he was learning so I would encourage you this morning be a learner be a learner, be active in your pursuit, in spending time with Jesus, but reading about him, learning about his ways, not just what he said, but what he did and the way that he did it and begin to put it into practice. And I believe that as we do that, as we uh, put these habits uh, of following Jesus in our lives, that it will be a real blessing to those around us. So we pursue understanding, seek God, ask him to to reveal things to you. Ask him to, to give you wisdom in what to do with them. But also let's be people who apply what we learn. I wonder, let, let's pray, let's pray. There'll probably be some here today that maybe have lots and lots of knowledge and experience this personal relationship with Jesus for many, many years. And you might think, well, <laughs> it seems quite a basic message today. But I pray that we never get to a place that we feel like we know it all. So maybe we just want to invite God in to, or, or make the decision, conscious decision today to explore and ask God and to, to learn Christ in a new way if that's you today. But there may be others here today that have very little or, or no understanding of who Jesus is in their lives. And it's great that you are here in this place seeking or learning or just being in that environment. 
But I pray that as you maybe make a decision or, or decide to learn more, that he will reveal himself to you. Again, not just from information, but from, through an experience and a relationship. So Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for who you are. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you uh, came to this earth in the form of a baby, God, that we celebrate at Christmas time that. But Lord, we, we know that you lived, Lord, a sinless, perfect life and that you went to the cross and you died and you rose again three days later and then you, Lord, ascended into heaven, but that you're alive and we thank you that you sent your spirit as well. But God, as we remember and we learn, Lord, I pray for each and every one of us here this morning. Will you help us to be learners? Help us. Maybe it comes more naturally to some than others, Lord, but will you help us continue to grow in relationship with you? Whether that's those first few steps or whether that's many steps further down the line, Lord, I pray that we'll continue to grow in this life in all its fullness, the relationship, Lord, that changes us from the inside out and that will make a huge difference, will bless this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.